have terrorists were killed in Aleppo, Idlib and Dara'a by the units of the Syrian Arab army. Iraqi army continues to target terrorist groups in several areas and takes control of the Shahwani area. A third Palestinian intifada looms in the horizon as Israeli well planes renew raids on Gaza Strip. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our news for today. Deputy Foreign Minister Dr. Faisal Maqdad has received Dr. Sigrid Kag, head of the joint mission of the Chemical Weapons Prohibition Organization and the UN. The two sides underlined the importance of fruitful cooperation between the two sides. Well, I've had uh, the pleasure of meeting, as always, with Dr. Maqdad, um, General Sharif, and his colleagues. We concluded the successful uh, completion of the chemical weapons material removal operation and the tremendous progress achieved in the elimination of Syria's chemical weapons program thanks to the constructive and continued strong cooperation with the Syrian authorities all the staff that have been made available there was a clear will and commitment from the beginning and implementation is proof of that this is an operation you can count it you can measure it and you can see it. It is very tangible, and I think uh, it's, uh, we, we noted today was a remarkable day on the 30th of June, and uh, we look forward to the full completion, which is nearly achieved by the Syrian authorities, and the Ramadan Karim to all of the people of Syria. I was very happy to meet Mrs. Sigrid Kag and her team. This meeting followed the success of completing the mission of transferring the Syrian chemical weapons on time outside Syria. I stress that it was a big success, not just for Syria, but also for the joint committee led by Mrs. Kag, who showed full dedication and wisdom. On this occasion, I congratulate her, the UN and the Organization for Prohibiting Weapons for bringing about the success of the mission. Syria has been truthful about all the pledges made within the framework of the initiative launched by President Vladimir Putin and received positively by President Bashar al-Assad. We think that what remains to be done is marginal and needs only some efforts to come to a final conclusion. Still, we think that the United States is to blame for any kind of delay because the American administration tried to politicize the issue from the beginning. The Syrian Arab army units have destroyed a warehouse of ammunition in Tel Jbin in Aleppo countryside. They also targeted terrorist gatherings in ancient Aleppo, Al-Sha'ar, Al-Zirba, Baidin, Quaris, Haritan, Kafar Hamra, Tal Qurah, al Hadar and Azaz killing and wounding a large number of terrorists and destroying their cars. Meanwhile, competent authorities dismantled a booby-trapped car parked by terrorists near Kasser stores in Al Arman neighborhood in Homs City. A source in Homs City reported that security authorities, in cooperation with local residents, discovered a Hyundai Avanti car carrying more than 400 kilograms of explosive materials intended to inflict a big damage on a street crowded with residents and consumers. In Idlib countryside, units of the Syrian Arab Army eliminated dozens of terrorists, including foreigners. The Syrian Arab Army targeted two hideouts in Shinan village in Azawiya mountain and destroyed several vehicles equipped with heavy machine guns and a warehouse containing weapons and ammunition in Binnish and Kafarruma. 
In Dara, Syrian Arab army units targeted terrorist groups at Samlin Zamrin crossing and in Atman and destroyed a car and killed the terrorists inside. The Syrian Arab army also eliminated terrorists southeast of Al Hajra town and intercepted an attempt by an armed group to infiltrate from Tussia village on the Syrian Jordanian borders in the direction of a military checkpoint, killing and wounding the members of the group. Two wounded terrorists from Syria have been transferred by the Israeli occupation troops to Naharia Hospital in Galili in the occupied Palestinian lands for treatment. Naharia Hospital has so far received 300 terrorists as the Zionist occupation entity continues to offer logistic and military support to the armed terrorist groups south of Syria, moving hundreds of them to its hospitals. An indication to the big interest and full care rendered by the occupation entity to terrorists and their leaders in Syria. Iran has reiterated its stand that the crisis in Syria and Iraq and the spread of terrorism in both countries is the result of the wrong policies of some regional and international states. This stand has been voiced by the Iranian Assistant Foreign Minister for Arab and African Affairs, Hussein Amir Abdullahian, during his meeting with the Irish Assistant Foreign Minister, Barry Robinson. Abdullahian pointed out that such policies greatly harmed the security of the region and the world, stressing the need to take earnest measures to combat terrorism. On his part, Robinson said his country supported a political solution in Syria and opposed the dispatch of arms there. He added that the EU policy should be serious in standing up against terrorism and extremism. Murtada Sermoudi, the Iranian Foreign Ministry Secretary, said the states which dedicated all their potentials to destroy Syria have admitted at the same time that there is no military solution to the crisis in the country. He pointed out that more money has been spent by those states to ignite violence in the region. Welcome back. In the latest Iraqi developments, Iraqi army cleared a Shahwani region in al mansuriya district north of Iraq of terrorist groups affiliated with the so-called Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant. The Iraqi army destroyed a camp used by terrorists as a training field in the city of Mosul and targeted a convoy along the kirkuk takrit highway killing dozens of gunmen. Finally, Israeli airstrikes were resumed this morning on Beit Lahia, north of Gaza, and Al Makusi Towers region northwest of the Strip, as well as the area east of Beit Hanun, injuring 10 Palestinians, including an old woman and three girls, and inflicting damage on Palestinian properties and houses. Palestinian Chairman Mahmoud Abbas condemned the crime committed by the extremist settlers yesterday against Palestinian youth Mohammed Hussein Abu Khdair in Sha'afat in occupied Jerusalem, branding this ugly crime as a confirmation of the barbarism of those gangs that abide by no humanitarian rules. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon also denounced the crime, calling for taking legal action against its perpetrators. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business at market news with Karun Kirkchan, but after a short break.